here we are. Uh, part of my job is working at Students on Ice, where we take youth from around the world on expeditions to the polar regions. Um, Patrick is an alumni. Donovan's an alumni. Matthew, who's doing our videography, is an alumni. Seamus O'Regan is an alumni. There's been a lot of people who have taken part in this really valuable program. If you want to know more about it, it's all online. But I like this picture because you have this tiny group of people. There's about 10-ish, 10 people there, and this massive piece of ice. And something about that relationship to something seems so big, and I'm so little, and what in the world could I possibly do about this really big thing? And I wanted to speak to some of that. Before I started, I intentionally threw a black slide uh, into my presentation. I wanted to take a moment to say, because usually when I, if I, whenever I have a session with, with folks, I kind of want to share like why me, who I am, and why I'm here. Uh, I'm more than just my name, I'm more than what I've done, I'm more than whatever my current title or role or responsibility might be. I'm a person who got to here. Um, and I've never done this before, but with so many people that started today, with so many examples, it just seemed very fitting. I mean, uh, I've alluded to a couple times that I had a bit of a tough time when I was in high school. Uh, I grew up in, in central Newfoundland, and it was a small school, it was the late 90s, and uh, it was a pretty dark time. Uh, it was a lot of judgment, and I started to take all of these other people's ideas that were, that were being shared with me, and I started to adopt them, and they became part of my belief system. And I started to believe what I was being told about myself and what I was capable of. And it was a dark, very sad. I was the type of guy who would just, I would walk around, my shoulders would probably be like this, and my head was down, I'd never smile, I'd never talk to anybody. And that was my existence for like a few years. And I had an extremely loving family, and I, and I've, I, w I was a very fortunate individual, but it's, in, it's interesting how like this affects everybody differently. Like I had, you, like when I look back at the situation, I'm like, why didn't I talk about it? Or why don't my parents know most of this stuff? Uh, I, I don't really have an answer, other than that I didn't really share it with anybody. And uh, it was a pretty dark place, and I got to some pretty, I, you start thinking like, well, what if I don't have to do this anymore? And it was, it was scary stuff. And, I remember one time, I, I, my turnaround, but not my turnaround point, but the, the last time I ever got like that, this dark, was I just, I kind of, I scared myself. And then I realized I had this flash of what, what am I risking giving up? And I had, without knowing it, I had discovered what the most important thing or motivation of my life is and was even as like a 16 year old. I just, all I've ever wanted to be is a good husband and a good father. That's like, that's all I've ever wanted in life, honestly. I grew up. <laughs> and, and I had this moment of like, I almost, like, I'm risking not being a dad, not even having that chance. Now, for me, that was my particular, like, in my heart, it's something that's really important to me. We, I believe every single individual on the planet has something in their heart that speaks to them like that. And when you're not yourself and you're not authentic, not authentic and you hold back, you're just... Incre you're, you're, you're denying the rest of the world that piece of you. And you're risking losing that opportunity or delaying that opportunity. So I sort of share that because then throughout my life I started to learn more and more to just be me even though I'm going to get the shit beat out of me because wounds heal and I'll find a way to somehow make it something positive. <laughs> and now I'm standing right here. Um, So I spent a lot of time getting my heart broken, and I spent, a lot of I spent some time breaking other people's hearts, but I think that's a part of life. But there, I remember I was telling Donovan, there was, there was one time when the girl I was dating, uh, who was an angel who just came out of heaven one day, floated down, and I said, you're really pretty. <laughs> I said to her one time, I remember we were, we were working together, and I, I came in the office, it was just her and I, and I just fell on the floor. I remember, cry, I remember crying the whole way to work, and I got to work because I was realizing something. And I said to her, I said, I'm afraid to love you too much. And I said, because you're going to leave. And like, for, that was real for me up to that point. And she looked at me, and I'll never forget it. It's the one thing I return to anytime life gets tough because it's full of that, is that she said, I'm never going to leave. And we've been loving each other first ever since that. And like that kind of stuff doesn't happen. That, no, just wait. <laughs> it sounds all rosy. Uh, 
That stuff doesn't happen unless you push yourself and put yourself past that line that you always stop at. It won't happen. And anyone here who's in, like, in a relationship that's part of your core, I think you could probably find all, lots of times where you push yourself past what was uncomfortable and allowed yourself to connect to this person. And I think that stands for all relationships, professional, friends, romantic, whatever. And then Stephanie and I figured... <laughs> I remember anyone here who's married with kids, we got married and right away I was like, we're so full of love, let's have a family. And like didn't take any time to just be a couple for a couple of years. And it was tough. We've been through a lot of growing pains and figuring out a lot about each other and ourselves as well as raising this other person and then wanting to give him the freedom to be himself. And this is the <laughs> squishy faced fuzzy headed monster that... Uh, that is really at the center of our life. I'm gonna correct that, because at the center of anyone's life, I believe, is you. Like, I can't do any of this justice unless I've got this core piece of me, and that's me, that's happy and healthy, and et cetera. But these guys are wrapped right around the outside of it. So I wanted to share that because it becomes, this is, what, this is how I walk and live in the world now. He's cool, I love him. I didn't even know that picture was being taken. But anyways, uh, this is Benjamin. He's watching me and Stephanie, as well as the rest of the world, and how it works. And that's how we piece together our understanding of the world around us, the environment we're in, your family and your day-to-day -day life. I heard someone say, like, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, which can be a scary thought. <laughs> because... Sometimes you, get, you spend time with folks that aren't the most positive, et cetera, et cetera. I'm, I'm digressing. But what I'm getting at is I need to live a life where as much as I can, not with the stress of being perfect, but with a, a practice that I'm going to try and be the best example that I can be. I'm not, I'm not going to try and be perfect. I'm not going to have the answers. I'm not going to try to tell him what he needs to do, but I'm going to be an example of the kind of examples you've seen so far today. And it's that desire that fuels me, and I would never have this if I hadn't been through the challenges that I had in my life. And we all go through different challenges, and they're all monumental to each individual. So what I want to talk about, oh, I got through, I forgot through a couple of these. And since then, having the opportunity, a lot of my work has been with working with youth and communities. I've got to travel around Newfoundland, Newfoundland and Labrador, and I'm so fortunate to be able to meet so many schools, so many people, and I've found there's so much passion and desire if people are just connected and supported, and they want to do good. They just need sometimes a little bit of, a little bit of help, a little bit of push, and I've loved being able to provide that. So I've been very fortunate to travel to the polar regions with students from around the world and talk about mental health, like two weeks outside of your comfort zone, no technology, no distractions, you got no place to hide from whatever's surfacing. I found it for myself, adults and students alike. We're all, oh, things come up and we deal with it together and it is an amazing experience. And you guys are having a very similar version of that today. It might be one day, but it's not about the time, it's about the depth of the quality and how you connect. And I hope you're doing so. And I know what it's like to sit in the peace and quiet and really sit with other people and find out what's going through their heads. How are things going? What is it you want to do? What do you want to do next? Why do you hold back? It's tough. It's not everyone, we don't, lots of people don't have answers to this stuff. But it's part of the process. I find most, one of the most powerful things in life you can have is a question. I find the answer is sometimes the end to something, whereas the question is a pursuit so a couple of things I want to talk about when we start focusing on the tomorrow or the future or what happens next or how do I do this back in Fogo, I miss Fogo by the way, is that a couple of things I'm going to talk about is that one person really does make all the difference. And I've learned th through life that all I have to represent myself, and some of these are my ideas, I don't pretend that they're doctrine. All I have to define myself is my thoughts, my words, and my actions. That's how I represent whatever I feel I am to the world outside. Now, you can't hear my thoughts, but my words and my actions. And your words can be, oh, I uh, 
regardless of how my, I might say it's important to be together and we're all connected. And then later on you see me like, I use the example, littering and kicking puppies. Like if you see that, you're going to be like, what the heck? His actions don't line up with his words. <laughs> but that's what we've got. And the question that, I, that one of the things I'll, I'll sort of mention is, are your words, how you talk to people, how you act, are they representative of what's most important to you? Or the things that are, you want to be involved in? Or that you want or hope for others? Is it in alignment? If it's not, why not? And the, the idea, the power of perspective and how you look at the world shapes how you live in it. I'm going to use, now I found a video a few years ago. Uh, I found it really powerful. And it really spoke to the way I feel like sometimes the world can look. So I'm going to share a piece of that with you now. I am part of a lost generation and I refuse to believe that I can change the world. I realize this may be a shock, but happiness comes from within is a lie, and money will make me happy. So in 30 years, I will tell my children they are not the most important thing in my life. My employer will know that I have my priorities straight because work is more important than family. I tell you this, once upon a time, families stayed together. But this will not be true in my era. This is a quick fix society. Experts tell me 30 years from now, I will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of my divorce. I do not concede that I will live in a country of my own making. In the future, environmental destruction will be the norm. No longer can it be said that my peers and I care about this earth. It will be evident that my generation is apathetic and lethargic. It is foolish to presume that there is hope. How do you feel right now? Out loud. Mad, terrified. Mad disappointed, terrified. Shocked. Boom, just boom, get it out. Does that feel full of hope? Now, I'm not saying that this isn't a question of do you agree with this stuff? Do you guys see some of these things represented to you when you look at the world? Simple, the simple statement, the one that always stands out to me is that like families stayed together once upon a time. Like statistics of how marriages or, or relationships, they end. I feel like the more you propagate something like that, or I don't, I don't, I don't not that I pretend to know the answer, but we, we oh, I'm just going to leave it. Uh, but it's scary. I read that and I want to find that person. I want to sit down. I want to give them a hug. I want to be like, I know that's how it looks, but what if? Let me, let, let me show you something. Like that's, how, that's my automatic reaction to something like that because I've been there and I've had, I mean, I, I still go to that place sometimes where that's how you see the world around you. And it's how the example that's being set sometimes. And it's not helpful. So I'm going to use a couple examples. So part of my background has been on like ocean conservation, but at the heart of it is the issue that I'm talking about today. But so I'm going to use a couple examples that are environment related, but they speak to a certain point. Do you guys know what's happening here? What's, what's, do, you, do you know what's caught on this turtle? On a bottle of water or plastic bottle, when you take the cap off, that little plastic ring that's left, that's what that is. And when this turtle was a small baby swimming through the ocean, it just happened to get caught around its shell. And then as, because this stuff that we use doesn't break down and it lasts and persists in nature, the rest of its life as it developed, it, its body had to develop around this piece of plastic. Now that's graphic, and I've shown that to like four-year-olds, and it's graphic and it's heavy, but what, here's the piece that I started to see the more I did this work. How many pieces of plastic do you see here? So how many people did it take to throw that away? One. Do you think that one person was hoping this was going to happen? Were they maliciously hoping that this ends up and causes this. No. An innocent act that most times people aren't thinking about, and if they are, it might be, what's the big deal? It's only one bottle. I'll recycle the next one. What's the big deal? I mean, obviously, it must be the norm. Everybody's using plastic bottles. And then I think about, how many plastic bottles have I used in my life? I can't even, I don't even know the number. And I, I don't know where they are. 
So for all I know, that is mine. Because I can't say one way or the other. And we live that way too often, almost all the time. Here's an example of what happens in um, this, this particular shot is taken from uh, an, an, a coastal city in Asia. This is what happens every time it rains. Every time it rains, whatever's in the gutter, storm drains, washes out to sea. And the more I started to look at this, because, you know, like first thoughts are, we got to stop using plastic and blah, 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 fight the problem. I started to look at this and I didn't see plastic anymore. I didn't see people in a boat. I don't see ocean. I don't see an environmental issue. I see it's just one bottle. I'll recycle the next one. What's the big deal? What is one more bottle going to change? What's the big deal? I'm just one person. How, what's the, what difference is it going to make to the planet if I don't use this plastic bottle or if I recycle this or not? What difference does that possibly make? Well, here's a million people thinking and acting like I'm just one person. What's the big deal? And here is the result. It's a collection of this idea and belief, which is totally false. And all that plastic breaks into all these tiny little pieces, outnumbers plankton in the ocean, animals ingest it. There's a, there's a video on Midway, which is an island in the Pacific. Again, when I look at this, what I see is it's just a bottle cap. It's just a, it's just a lobster band. It's just a toothbrush. It's just this, it's just that. What's the big deal? It's just one piece. Every single one of the items right here is connected to one person. And there is our impact. Plastic bags is another one. This is taken outside the landfill in St. John's. Plastic forest. All that plastic ending up in the ocean. And they find sea turtles, because sea turtles mistake plastic bags for jellyfish. They find sea turtles dead, washed up on shore, and they'll, they'll do an autopsy. They'll open up this turtle's stomach, and there's 19 square feet of plastic. But in this shot right here now, that's one plastic bag. One person in one moment thinking, what's the big deal? What am I going to do about it? I don't make a difference. And that's a powerful way to look at something. But I'm going to share something else with you now. And all of this will come true unless we choose to reverse it. There is hope. It is foolish to presume that my generation is apathetic and lethargic. It will be evident that my peers and I care about this earth. No longer can it be said that environmental destruction will be the norm. In the future, I will live in a country of my own making. I do not concede that 30 years from now, I will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of my divorce. Experts tell me this is a quick fix society, but this will not be true in my era. Families stayed together once upon a time. I tell you this. Family is more important than work. I have my priorities straight because my employer will know that they are not the most important thing in my life. So in 30 years, I will tell my children, money will make me happy is a lie, and true happiness comes from within. I realize this may be a shock, but I can change the world, and I refuse to believe that I am part of a lost generation. How do you feel right now? Empowered. How do you feel? My brain just exploded. <laughs> My brain just exploded. What, what's different? What changed? Perspective. What someone else say? Hope. The funny thing is, the poem didn't change. It's the exact same poem. It's the exact same words. It's even in the same order. The only thing that changed was the direction we read it in. And look at the difference of how you felt before and how you, how you felt after. How you looked at that one example, look at the two differences in your emotional reactions. Hopeless and hopeful. But the poem hasn't changed. You did. That power to look at the world around you and see and, and you have a choice in how you look at it that's an incredible power. If you go around thinking that nothing's ever going to change, you're going to see all the examples of why nothing's ever going to change. 
If you go around and, and, and believing and, and having it in your heart that people do try and make change, and people are trying to make a difference, you will find people that are doing exactly that. And the more you get involved with it, all of a sudden, like, you're, like some of the people that are organizing and speaking here, like we've been connected to, some of us have been connected to each other for years because we happen to cross paths. Because of work or, or actions that we're taking, because of how we're choosing to look at the world. We have that power and we have that choice. We forget sometimes. So the question I sort of ask for you is, what world are you going to live in? Is it going to be a world where all relationships end? Or is it going to be a world where in a relationship, if you can put each other first and see the situations as stuff you got to get through, but it's never bigger than each other, what would that be like? Or believing in yourself. Or finding examples to believe in yourself. Or folks who believe in you to help remind you. And which thoughts, words, and actions will you choose to define you? I could easily be nervous and not come up. Or I can choose to act on what I believe is important and push myself past that barrier. And every one of us has a way to do that in your life with something that's important to you. And there's examples all around the world. In, even, even here in Newfoundland, I, I've met so many people that are just pitching in because something needs to be done. It's their communities, it's their home. This is Arnold's Cove. Where people recognize we've got to do something. And one person, say this person on the far left, is like, come on, Betty. We've got to get down on that beach. Let's just pick up some of the garbage that's there. All right, I'm going to grab, my, I'm going to grab uh, Doug down the road. And Doug takes his, uh, his brother who's in from St. John's, and, and he's got his young fellow there. And before you know it, there's seven or eight people out there trying to just clean up. And they're not converting the rest of the community, but people see this going on. It's an example. Choosing to say in the lineup at a store, no thanks, I don't need a plastic bag, that's you're not you trying to convert the world against plastic bag use. It's just you choosing not to be a part of it. And that's an example that you may not, you're not trying to change anybody, but the person behind you might go, you know what, I got way too much of that at home too. I don't need my bag. You have no idea of the impact your decisions can make. And they can be incredibly harmful or they can be incredibly helpful. And it's kind of a mindfulness and a practice that moves it towards helpful. Here's five people that kayaked to an isolated beach and in one afternoon collected all this debris. That's an enormous effort and five people is all it took. There's one person behind the camera. <laughs> Donovan was down there. What an idiot. There's only four. <laughs> here's that plastic forest cleaned up by a bunch of people who just love hiking and they said you know what here's an activity I love how can I give back how can I shape this how can I make this a little bit better and then they clean it up and the forest actually looks green it ends up white again because we keep using plastic bags so obviously this isn't the answer but it's a way to act and the issues and some of the themes of the conference this weekend, it's something you can act on. I'm not, you don't all need to go back and do the exact same thing, but you can all go back and do something. A particular theme, issue, start a group, have an event, chat with people in your community who you think might like be in line with what you want to do, just start having conversations. No pressure, just see how it rolls out. So where do we go from here? I guarantee you, we're in this together. It does, whatever happens, whatever the future is going to be, we're all going to be in it and a part of it. And we're not alone. You can turn to any of the organizers' names that you might happen to remember or you, you saved your little pamphlet there. You can contact any of these people and say, hey, I was at that conference and this really did stand out to me. And like, who, who do you think I could chat with about this really neat idea I have? You have that opportunity to do that. And they're going to welcome your email or text or whatever. And who knows what will happen after that. It's just that action that makes that happen. I really believe that everybody is a, is a born leader. You don't need to be the person saving the world 
It's just that one person, I believe, what makes someone a leader is just choosing not to follow. So if, you, if it doesn't feel right to bully someone or pick on someone or judge someone or isolate someone and you see a bunch of people doing it, just don't be a part of what's allowing it to happen. And think, what could I do differently? The power of that question, like, what could I do differently, is a way to try new stuff. And the new stuff is pretty exciting. One of the things that really shaped my life a long time ago was I felt so fortunate. Like, I could have been born in any family, any time, anywhere in the world, in any number of circumstances. But I was fortunate enough to be uh, a, a white guy in Canada and had enormous freedoms and chances to try stuff and explore things. And I felt so fortunate that I'm like, I realize that whatever it is I do with the rest of my life, I need to be able to, I need to give. And I don't always know how, but I just look for opportunities to do it. Helping out here was one way that I could support Patrick in something that's really important to him. But it's not just him. Patrick is one name, one person. But he has a team of people and a school and a community and now a province that all got together. And it started with one idea. That doesn't make Patrick the hero. <laughs> he is a hero. It doesn't make him the hero. He, he, was, he was a person who, who something was important and acted on it. And then all of a sudden, I'm sure to his surprise, holy crap, look what's going on. And it's something to be proud of. So, that's the piece I want to pass on now, is how do we look at the world and what can we do with it? And the power of your perspective to shape it in any way that you choose. So thanks. <laughs>